selling with authenticity. It's building that relationship. Building about the value. Because you want to make that impact. It can make you happy. Elevate others around Welcome us. to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your home for authentic, effective, and socially integrated sales strategies to help you master the art of selling. Join your co-hosts Larry Levine and Daryl Amy, along with some of the world's best sales thought leaders and practitioners, as we explore ways to help you grow your sales. Hello and welcome to Selling from the Heart. Your co-host Daryl Amy here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? <laughs> hey, you know we got all, this is an exciting time. We got all kinds of things going on. We have a global audience, and we've gone global to bring our guest onto the Selling from the Heart podcast. Super excited for this one, Daryl. We have sailed the high seas. We go to no uh, <laughs> no lo- links are too far to bring you the best guests. We've got a fantastic conversation. Uh, coming up today with Jason Mark Campbell, you're going to want to definitely uh, get your notepad out for this one. It's going to be so exciting. One of the things I'm really, really excited about is today's sponsor, which is the Breakthrough Sales Leaders Retreat. The Breakthrough Sales Leaders Retreat, Larry, it's coming up and it's not too far away and it's time to get your ticket. It's going to be October 20th in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm so excited. Look who's coming. Dave oh, Sanderson. We is love in the Dave house. Sanderson. He's, he's so awesome. And, you know, this just goes to show you when, when all three of us get together and we start engaging in conversations, you never know what will happen. This is a conversation we all had late last year around the holidays, and it's finally come to fruition. We are so excited about this. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. And we're going to bring you the mindset, the skill set, and the tool set to take your sales team to the next level. And with all the challenges, all of the uh dynamic opportunities. Let's just put it that way, right? Uh, all, all of the things going on right now, this is the time uh, to look very strategically. And if you're a sales leader or you know one, send them to BreakthroughSalesRetreat.com, BreakthroughSalesRetreat.com and uh, get your ticket. This is going to be a fantastic event. I'm so excited about it. I'm also excited about our guest today. Larry, why don't oh. you introduce our friend and let's dive in. Uh, well, first of all, welcome Jason to the podcast. Jason, Mark Campbell and I, gosh, we met, I know we connected on LinkedIn. It has to be within the last year and we connected because we are like-minded and like-hearted. Jason's the author of Selling with Love and I know we're going to dive into this. I've been on his podcast. If there's ever somebody who's of like mind and like heart, it's Jason. We can't wait to dive into this, but welcome. Welcome Jason to Selling from our podcast. Larry Darrow, it's a pleasure to be here. Super excited. And uh, may I just add a little something on your, your breakthrough event? I'm so excited you guys are putting that together. It seems quite timely. Uh, mm-hmm. And you mentioned how you know we're getting into some turbulent times, but if there's one place you can always do better and you can always invest more is when you're training your sales leaders. Because when times are tough, those who keep investing and educating and bring themselves to the top level as a sales professional, the opportunities are gonna be ripe. So uh, I just wanna uh-huh. double down on that and encourage people to take action. No, yeah. it, it's so good. And, and by the way, everyone, we got Jason coming all the way from Malaysia. So we, we go we go to all corners of the globe to find really cool <laughs> guests. <laughs> it's great. It's so cool to have you here. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. And you know the question that every guest in the Selling from the Heart podcast answers. Jason, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? All right. Well, if I couldn't answer that question, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't be too much of a merit to have written a book of a similar topic. And um <laughs> You know, for me, I call it selling with love. And, you know, it's interesting because when I was on a journey about publishing my book, I was wondering if anybody had spoken about a similar topic. And it was like months before my publishing date. And I saw this amazing selling from the heart. And there was there was a part of me that went like, oh, is this is this competition? Right. And that actually is a key to the answer of what I'm going to give you around. Mm. You know, what does selling from the heart mean to me is you're actually focused on the problem to solve. Right. Like there's something that you want to make an impact. There's a problem that exists and you want that to be gone. And so when I know that for me, seeing people that are being manipulated by, manipulated by, you know, uh, I use the proper terminology. I, I'll call it douchebag sales and marketing people. <laughs> okay. Hey, there we go. When, when <laughs> I see people getting taken advantage of that, it breaks my heart. And mm-hmm. so if I'm able to bring my message forward to teach people how to sell with love, why it's effective, why the world needs it. And in your case, it'd be selling from the heart. I'd use them as synonyms in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what it means to me is your focus on the problem. And that means 
when I see something like this, it's not a competitor, it's somebody on the same mission as me. And so it makes me think more about collaboration instead of competition. And, you know, I had Larry on my podcast. He was a fantastic <laughs> guest. I get to come and share here. But truly to answer the question, selling from the heart means you're focused on the problem and you look for any opportunity to create value, solve it and make an impact. Oh, this this is so good. I can't believe we actually heard the word D-bag on the Selling from the Heart podcast. So <laughs> that, that was so cool. You know, we can, we can kind of rephrase that one and we call them empty suits here at That's Selling right. from the Heart. But That's you got right. the same point across, Jason. I appreciate it. Yeah, no. Pardon my French. I am French Canadian. So I'll use no, it's that all as a, it's all good. So now I got I got two Canadians ganging up on me. So that's, that's right. Good. Better watch out. Hey, you know this is this is such a, a. I'm glad you brought this up because when you talk about selling with love, um, you know when you talk about selling with love, and I think initially everyone thinks you're going to go to the sweet, you know, emotional side of things. Uh, but it's a, it's more than that. It's a deep caring that says. I want to bring value to you. Like I care that your problem gets solved. I care that you get the outcomes that you want and it means something to me. Um, I think that is a really powerful interpretation of selling with love. It's, it's not just some touchy feely um, thing. It, it actually has got some, some impact, some gravitas. And um, to me, this is, this is giving a rip, right? This is caring about the other person not just about the commission check. Yeah, I, I use the word love because it comes with a bit of a contradiction or at least makes people raise an eyebrow. They're only like sales love. I've mm -hmm. probably not seen that in the same sentence, probably in a similar shock when people saw selling heart. I thought salespeople were heartless. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the stereotype. Cold, heartless, there. unloving. Ah, God. So no, you, you hit the nail on the head there, Daryl, because really what I see is like when you truly know what you offer is so much more than what you ask in return. And it's an energy exchange, right? Mm -hmm. Like money, you know, stored energy, products and service. I, I label it all as energy and, you know, full disclaimer, I have worked in the personal growth and spiritual field before. So energy is a very popular term in my industry. Mm -hmm. um, but as such, like when I know what I'm offering is going to create cost savings, time savings, stress or risk savings, and I get to offer that with confidence because I have an understanding of who I'm serving. And that's the word. It's you actually care about selling. You're out of your head and you're thinking like, my God, I really need to serve this person the best of my abilities because I have a really, really good feeling that this is truly going to be so much more than what I'm asking for them to pay. And when you come with that energy, it's such a different way of selling and you're really there to serve. Yeah, no, th th I, I'm so enjoying this conversation and, you know, we bring it's selling from the heart. We bring heart in, in a very unique way. And we integrate this into sales and how salespeople become the best versions of themselves. You have a really interesting take on selling with love and we just, I can't wait, but it, we'd love to start. There you go. Play on the word. We'd love to start, you know, breaking this down is, What's your interpretation of selling with love and how, why and how is this so important in the sales world today? Yeah. Well, you know, as the definition I just said, if I see sales as an energy exchange between conscious beings and when you know what you offer is so much more than what you ask in return, uh, the hidden ingredient in the equation is there's always an emotion. And I say mm -hmm. when you do it that way, love is what balances the equation. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that gives a lot of perspective for people to understand what I mean by selling with love is to look at, well, what does a transaction look like if it's not coming from love? And if I'd use a broad term to kind of encompass all of it, it's fear. Mm. You're, you're selling from a place of fear. And so what I'm trying to get people out of is this place of fear and jump into a place of love. Now in the book, I do a little more of a breakdown of three different types of ways that this fear kind of manifests. And depending on where you are on your, you know, sales professional journey, you're going to have some different growth stages. And uh, I feel like we kind of all go through the stages at some point. Matter of fact, there's times where, you know, we go up and down, you know, if, if you're a salesperson that just always is steady, well, if it's like a heartbeat, that would be a flat line. Um, so I think as sales, we often have ups and downs and emotions. What I'm trying to do is get people to be aware of what does it look like to sell from love? What mm -hmm. does it look like when you're not selling from love and kind of being able to diagnose, oh, look, I'm actually doing this. How do I get to go through the stages and come back to a place of love, which again is coming to a place where you know what you offer is so much more than what you ask in return. So if you're interested, I could break these down. Uh, yeah, yeah let's go. Let's get started. Three types right. of fear. 
three types of fear. So, you know, the different emotions that you would go through at the baseline level, what I've noticed is there's some people that have massive sales reluctance. Like this is the beginning stages of your sales career. The mm-hmm. thought of picking up the phone is terrifying. And any activity that looks or smells or just resembles a sales activity, you will do that last. So your day might be like, okay, I need to make some results happen. Whether you're a business entrepreneur or a direct salesperson, like making calls, getting on appointments, you have the KPIs or leading indicators of things you need to do that bring results. But then you're like, oh, maybe I should post on social media. Let me do a bit more research. Mm-hmm. Like you'll find other activities to distract yourself. And that's the last thing you'll want to do. Oh, maybe I'll have, I need to have a coffee so I'm in the right energy. Uh, nobody's in the office. It's lunchtime. <laughs> I'll wait till, and you know, the day kind of unfolds. And then you're like, well, I'm doing everything except that. I call this the, um, the shame and guilt box. Okay. So when you're in the shame and guilt space of sales, it's like the act of selling feels shameful. Hmm. You're basically imagining yourself every time you sell. And I don't want to knock on this industry, but it's the one that is the caricature of every single conversation I have. But everyone imagines the used car salesman, the bad one. Now, if you are a used car salesman, I know you're not the bad one. You're the good one. That's because you're listening to this podcast. So that's right. (laughs) I'm talking about the bad one, the caricature, the movie stereotype. If you have that mindset of what sales is and you're thinking it's that caricature of a used car salesman that takes advantage of their lead, then every time you step into the place that you need to sell, you have to step into an identity of something that repulses you. Your entire body will resist doing that. It's like if, you know, I don't know, are you guys cat or dog lovers? I'm more in the dog column for sure. I, I would I would agree on that one. All right. So you guys all love dogs. So imagine if I would tell you, you know, your job is actually to um, euthanize dogs, right? <laughs> now, if, if, if you don't understand the, like, the macro benefits to that, but every time right. you do it, you'd be like, this breaks my heart. Mm. And so if you had a dog to euthanize that day, you'd try to find anything else to do except to do that task because you love dogs. And this does not align with your values. This does not align with the identity. You do not want to be a dog murderer. Does this make sense? Yeah. No, it, it does. But here, here, here's what's interesting. I just have to interject something because I love where we're going with this. Because if you ask salespeople now, I don't care where in the world you ask this question, inevitably, you're probably going to get some of the same responses. Ask salespeople to describe salespeople and just stop and listen to what they say. And it's always more negative than it is positive. And we have that because you speak a mindset, Jason, and we have this going in the back of our mind. So here we are, whether we're picking up the phone, doing any kind of business development, anything like that, we have these things floating in the back of our mind of all the negative stereotypes for salespeople. Yet we control all of this and how we carry ourselves. Mm. That's what's interesting about this. That's right. And you know, it's, it's even further because anyone who's good at making a movement, making a big change, a leader or a, an, an entrepreneur, someone that we look up to, we will never label them as a salesperson. We'll, we'll probably put that in a box with a negativity, but we look at some of the movers and shakers of our time. You know, oftentimes I'll look at, you know, I'll ask people who are your role models and they might be uttering some of the classics, like maybe the Steve Jobs or the Elon Musk's or maybe Oprah Winfrey. Some of you is going to be Donald Trump. Um, whoever it is that you support, that you look up to, you're going to say, oh, wow, like they're an amazing entrepreneur, they're an amazing leader. But you forget to realize that these are amazing salespeople, regardless mm-hmm. of what values they have and the impact they want to make. They are movers and shakers of energy as the universal mm-hmm. term that I love to use. And so we won't label the people we admire as salespeople because sales is like in that little box. Uh, in personal quotes, we'll call it shadow material. It's like we don't want to acknowledge sales. It's in that a yucky box over there. But these people we look up to, no, they're different. And one of the exercises I really encourage people to do is think about who are the people you look up to and realize, oh my God, they are salespeople. And in everyday life, if you have children, you are definitely a salesperson trying to get them to do what they need to do. If you're trying to get a job, the interview process is sales. If you're trying to raise capital in your company, that's a sales process. If you're a salesperson yourself, well, you're in sales every day. And you know that there are a lot of great people doing great sales in great ways. It doesn't need to be that one stereotype or that one negative experience you had or the beliefs that maybe have been passed down by your culture or your parents that were like, no, stop asking. And all these beliefs that go around, you know, being assertive and speaking your word and asking for what you want. 
That's a lot of baggage that happens in this category that make us resist sales. You look at statistics on follow-ups and it's absolutely terrible because there's so much more touch points that are required for the sales to happen, yet most salespeople stop after two, three. You need four, five, or more when you look at the average cycle for sales. Well, one of the reasons we have to investigate is like in our childhood where we told like, stop asking, you know, because as children, we're not great salespeople. We're very selfish little buggers <laughs> that don't care about the buyer. They care about themselves. So they're mm -hmm. just annoying and they keep asking. But there's usually a little trauma of it, we could say, that you know a parent might get angry and say, no means no, stop asking. That baggage gets carried. And these are a lot of things I suggest for people to unpack, hmm. look into you know who are your role models, understand how they're salespeople and how you can develop your own style as a salesperson. And if you've had any type of event in your past that have made you realize that it's not safe to ask for what you want and to push, and I don't mean push in being a pushy salesperson, but to be firm in your beliefs that you want to serve, then those are going to be the things you got to do to take your foot off the brake so you mm. can move forward in sales. Wow, so powerful. So let's continue this discussion on fear. There's there's more types. Uh, yeah. What, let's talk about more of this. There's a graduation. So like for, I feel like for most people on this call, I don't think that first box is mostly where they live. I mean, most people here are already salespeople and they've overcome that. A lot of the fear of rejection usually sits in this first box. Mm -hmm. This next one might be a little more tricky. I, I call it the fear pride paradox. And mm -hmm. the reason is because you can be very effective selling from this place. This is when you start learning some of the process of selling, you know, you learn what are the techniques? What is the human psychology? What is the sales process? It's a game of numbers. And you don't care about what you sell. You care about just producing the results. Mm. And you get good at it. And you can produce a lot of results. But what impact that ultimately happens to the person you sold to, you don't care. So what happens, especially when we're younger and we get into sales, we start realizing, wow, this generates a nice commission check. And you keep doing it. And then you get maybe hired in a company that might be dealing with more shady types of products, but it doesn't matter. They pay you a lot and you just want to go out there and make money. For any of you who've watched Boiler Room, you know, you're, uh, you are the future something of this firm. Uh, <laughs> you know what it takes, or if you like Grant, Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross, you know what it takes to sell real estate? Um, I feel like some of you are filling the blanks here, so we'll keep it PG. <laughs> but there's a toxicity to it. Yeah. All right? Yeah. We're, we can be very effective in this in bringing results for the company, but we're not asking like, What's the point of it? Is, am I actually serving the person? Do I care about the results and the impact for everyone I sell or is everybody just a number for bringing me commissions? And I find it very interesting for when you're in this space, there seems to be a lot of correlation around the activities that would typically numb you to the reality of what's going on. W what I mean by that is stereotypes around salespeople like the Wall Street broker, you're yeah. talking about like <clears throat> drug addictions, uh, sex addictions, uh, gambling addictions, things that distract you from being present and, and in touch with what's really going on. And that's where there's usually a break. And most of us in sales can do this for only so long until we burn out. Mm -hmm. And I know I've went through a short phase of that in my early 20s, just feeling like there's something wrong. And I wanted to graduate from that. So for anybody who's there, um, I would actually see that you need to become a little more aware that whatever sale you are making, there is a responsibility that comes with every sale. Spider-Man's uncle said it to him. I think for salespeople, we are very powerful and we mm -hmm. have to acknowledge that responsibility. Wow. Uh, so there, there's a lot to unpack there. As I'm listening to what you're saying, Jason, I had flashes of like commission breathing salespeople just spewing stuff out because you're describing a lot of that. And what's interesting is you said you had caught it in, in, you know, in your 20s. Because if you ask a lot of younger salespeople, this would be interesting. Ask a younger bunch of younger salespeople, and I'm not here to disrespect any younger salespeople, but a lot of them are going to get into this because they want to make money. I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. But ask that same 20-year-old who's now 40, why'd you get into sales? Totally different response. Totally yeah. different. Yeah, I, I identify with what you're saying, Jason, because I think uh, there is there is that moment. I remember the moment as a salesperson, young. I was you know my early early twenties and uh, B two B sales hardcore. I remember the day I figured it out. Right, you walked in after six nine months, just like 
what am I doing? How's this work? Fear, all that stuff. And then there's one day you wake up and you go, I figured this out. I know how to sell. And, um, and then the commissions started coming in, right? And then you're growing your income every quarter, quarter over quarter and year over year. And I think um, in the middle of all of that, it is so, and, and you're winning trips, you're getting awards, you're getting recognized for all of this. Um, I think in the middle of that is where pride comes in and that, that there's an, you know, without love in that there is an empty place, and that empty place, it gets filled with all kinds of stuff, right? And we see sales I and mean, we've talked about this on the podcast a lot over this past year, like the mental health um, quote index of sales is not good. It's not good at all. It's in a really bad place. Um, and maybe, maybe this whole pride and, you know, to get there and disconnect from your heart is what's driving all of these mental health challenges and the addictions that come with it to, to, you know, this is, um, I mean, this, this sales becomes at this level, somewhat addictive in itself, right? You get addicted to success rather than addicted to helping people. Yeah. It's almost like a like a sales PTSD kind of thing. Mm -hmm. like Interesting. You, 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 you're almost like you keep going to it. It's like, it, it, you, you said it, it can be an addiction and there, there's a level of awareness that needs to be built. Now it, it was interesting. I was talking to another gentleman. Um, his name is Yannick Silver. Great man wrote a book called evolved enterprise. Uh, and it's all about how to be a more conscious business. Mm. But the Yannick that I knew, which was in his younger days, he was all about like make money online, do affiliates, ads, all that stuff. And we were having this interview and he was talking about how, you know, he had the goal. He wanted the Rolex. He wanted the Aston Martin, the car, all of that stuff. And then when he got it, they still had an emptiness. And he's like, what's going on? And he's in his 40s now, exactly as you've mentioned. And he's like, yeah, no, I need to make a difference. There needs to be a purpose. I want to make an impact. And now he's leading a revolution of entrepreneurs that want to lead from the heart and make a, you know, ignite the suns within everyone to really shape the world and solving the real problems we have. And I asked him a question and it kind of left us all going like, oh my God, I don't think there is an answer as much as we would love it. Is that, do you need to go through that chase to hmm. realize that it's not what you want? Wow. Yeah. Probably. I mean, probably. Yeah. Right. I think, I think so. I think so. It's hard to get that close to something so addictive and not get hooked a little bit or a lot. I think, you know, maybe that maybe you're right about that, but there's this awakening moment um, that happens, yes. right? And some, it could be a burnout <laughs> moment. Um, it could be a crash and burn <laughs> moment um, or it can be an awakening moment right now. And, and so what does, as we wrap up our conversation today, from your perspective, what does someone look like who's graduated out of that? What's the, what's the enlightened, awakened, um, love-based sales professional look like to you? So to make this short, I'll, I'll say that when you had that experience, I think you come to that awakening. And I think it'll be the, the only thing we can hope for is for it to happen faster, shorter, and without any mm -hmm. of the negative yeah. consequences, right? So that's the best I think we can hope for. And if we steer salespeople to go into better companies with better culture, less toxicity, we're already mm -hmm. going to accelerate that growth really fast. Um, the third fear, right? Uh, just to touch on it quick is usually the one that happens after you've graduated and you had this like, oh my God, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. I call it the rational sabotage. And then you become so afraid of the power of sales that you're trying to put the buying decision into the buyer's hand. This mm -hmm. is when you show up with like a bunch of proposals, all the PDFs, mm -hmm. trying to push, push all the information so that they can make the best decision for themselves. And the buyer just for some reason doesn't buy anymore. And your sales numbers drop and you're like, I'm trying to care for them. Why was mm -hmm. it easier when I didn't care? And I would just tell them <laughs> to buy. And, and then you're wondering, do I need to be an A, uh, an A-hole? Right. Who doesn't care? Sorry, an empty suit who yes. doesn't care and just sells. Or if I'm caring, does that mean I need to compromise on my revenue? Mm. And uh, that ends up being a big trap for a lot of people that are still stuck in their head thinking they're doing better, but rather they're not taking responsibility. They're not caring. Mm. They're putting that responsibility and that care for the buyer and themselves. And the buyer wants to be led. They mm. want to be led to a place where they can trust the person they're dealing with that actually has their best interest in heart and can tell them, based on what I know from you and as close to what I understand from you and as much as I understand the product we have, I know this is what we should do and I'm confident that it's worth a shot. 
That's what mm. leading looks like. That's what selling with love looks like. I'd assume this is exactly how selling with the heart looks like, but it's a level that we didn't even know existed. And it comes from that place where you realize that I'm willing to take you by the hand with everything that I've learned because I care so much. I want to take you there and I'll do what is necessary. Oh, this, wow. this, this, is, this is so good. And I mean, we could sum this up, but this is why the inner work the inner work that Daryl and I stress here at Selling from the Heart, I know you do as well, Jason, is so important because sales is tough, right? It is a mindset roller coaster. And I love this last example you used about I, it was radical sabotage. Uh, rational, sabotage. rational. Yeah, my apologies. Everything. Yeah, <laughs> my, my apologies, but think about that for a second is we go through all these things and then we're too afraid to be afraid, right? We're just too afraid to do anything. So then, right. We just give them all these things, right. And we just give, 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 help, help, right? help, help, help. Right. But it's oh. not really helpful. No, it's not. We're just trying to avoid. Yeah. We're trying to avoid that. I think that uh, this is, this is a really beautiful, beautiful perspective on this. And it all comes down to understanding your purpose and really giving a rip about helping your clients, being clear in your values. All of these things we talk about at Selling from the Heart. And I'm assuming the same type of things we're going to get when we read Selling with Love. Yeah, I mean, I have my own methodologies, which I won't go too much into detail here, because I think, you know, one thing I'm very very excited about for anybody listening to this podcast is you're already listening to an amazing source of information that speaks about selling from the heart. So I think that everyone here that's a listener is already in a right mindset, in a right mm -hmm. step, learning from the right sources. This is amazing. Uh, anybody who'd want to go deeper and learn from my methodology, of course, you can always pick up my book, but I'm just excited that, you know, there are champions like you guys, myself, I've interviewed other people that have written similar books with the same ethos. There's like this global mm -hmm. awakening and we've been it's talking beautiful. about this. Yeah. And we're all, I call us like warriors of light coming in to change the methodology, <laughs> change the mindset around sales. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you what's the funniest thing about this. And Larry, I'm, I'm sure you've probably picked up on this one too, but a book from the 1960s called The Greatest Salesman in the World. Yes. It's, this, it's a cute story that a man finds these tablets with the mm -hmm. ancient wisdom mm -hmm. on how to be one of the greatest salespeople in the world. And one of those things, the first or second tablet is love. That's right. Yep. I'm like, I'm not inventing anything. I'm not teaching anything yep. new. I'm simply reminding people of what is the critical things that turn the people into extreme successful salespeople, yep. which unfortunately is not what we witness in the majority of what we're being told a salesperson is. You got to yeah. go into the fringes to find excellence. And I think for people that are on this podcast, you're already on the right path to be in this upper echelon. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's so true. But as we wrap up, I just, I just have to, I got to play on what you just said, Jason, because you throw back to the 60s. I mean, we can even go back, right, 100 years ago. And for our Selling from the Podcast listeners, you know, I'm taking this deep journey into Napoleon Hill and the people that he spoke to and all that. I mean, I, I remember just reading a book and he was having a conversation with Andrew Carnegie. And this goes back 100 years ago. They were talking about the same thing in that conversation that's why i'm a firm believer that what's forever old is forever new these things stood the test of time and will always stand the test of time great this is, this is great stuff i love it i love it jason i understand the audio book is coming out so if you're listening to the podcast why not listen to jason's book how can uh, how can we get our hands on the audio book and help you support the launch of this I mean, for anybody who's listening to this, if you look up Selling with Love, sellingwithlove.com, that's the website. I'll have all the available links there to get the audio book, get the physical awesome. book, all that stuff's available. Uh, any support is huge. And if anybody just wants to get in touch, uh, had, um, had an insight from our conversation today, maybe some clarifications you want, LinkedIn, that's where I reached for Larry and started <laughs> this whole uh, journey. Uh, right. I make myself available there as well. So as you can tell, Jason, Mark Campbell. And of course, if you send a connection request, which I do recommend, add a note and tell me you heard of me on the Selling from the Heart podcast. That way, at least I can uh, reconnect the dots and we can talk about the good stuff. Awesome. No, hey, hey, just real quick. This is all good. There's another reason why you and I are kindred spirits is your middle name is my middle name spelt the exact same way. So I, there, there you, you go, go man. <laughs> Love it. Mark Love it. C. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. Well, Jason, thank you so much for sharing time today. You are a true Selling from the Heart champion. And uh, this has been fantastic. Absolutely. Hey, thanks a lot, Jason. Thanks for having me. Awesome.
Oh, what wow. A, that was great. Jason's yeah, such what, a great what a, guy. What a really powerful conversation and, and looking at these levels of fear and the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear. And looking at these different levels of fear that kind of plague us during different phases of our sales career. Beautiful. What a beautiful thing. And, and what a powerful paradigm to be able to think about. I, I just, I thought this was a great conversation. I know everyone in the community is going to want to grab Jason's book or audio book. And uh, when you do give a shout out, leave a review and uh, let's support Jason in all of this. Cause this is, this is a global movement of authenticity in the sales profession. And it, it is, um, it's such a much, it's a better way to sell Larry. <laughs> no, it's, it's a better it, way to sell. It, it, it is. And, and here's, what's interesting is, is the three areas that Jason touched on. I don't care how long you've been in sales. You're going to experience all three of those. Yep. And as I, as I'm sitting here, as we're having this conversation with Jason, I'm flashing back to all the times I acted like all three of those yep. people. It's interesting. It's just being aware. It's just being consciously aware that we all go through those. It's just, what do we do to get out of those? The other thing that Jason talked on about was the importance of creating a culture, an authentic culture based on love, caring about our clients, caring about each other, caring about impact. And that is exactly the heart behind the Breakthrough Sales Leaders Retreat. Uh, we believe that those are the things that are the key to breaking through to the next level. Um, and we're so excited about this. Go to BreakthroughSalesRetreat.com and get your ticket and uh, get tickets for all of the sales leaders in your organization. This is going to be a very, very powerful event, and you don't want to miss it. No, none whatsoever. And you as sales leaders, you set the tone. You help develop the culture that sits inside your sales team. It all starts with authentic sales leaders. It's beautiful. Well, we've got a great roster of guests coming up throughout this fall. Also want to give a shout out to our friends at the Outbound Conference. It's coming out right around the time of this podcast. Uh, but if you haven't got your ticket yet, why not get your ticket? Come join us. Go to outboundconference.com. Use the discount code HEART100 and get 10% off. We'll see you there. Selling from the Heart is going to be there. It's going to be a blast interacting with so many of you. Till next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep adding real value, sell with love, and most of all, sell from the heart.